I'm pleased to announce the publication of the second edition of my book about making a film called The Kids Are All Right with The Who. And it's now called The Who and I, which is a very appropriate title because it's how I related to The Who and I guess how they related to me. Um, and tells that story, which is a kind of object lesson for all people aspiring to be in the creative industries of what can happen when you make a film um, that's a, it's a biopic in a way, uh, but it's also the first rockumentary, we invented the term, and it also gives us a feeling of what can go wrong. Um, it was a nightmare journey, punctuated by huge laughs, um, and is also gives the people that read it a feeling for what it's like to deal with giant egos, uh, lots of money, fantastic music, incredible visuals, and people who get a little bit lost in themselves. And I include myself in that. It's not just them. And it's not just the who, it's a way of life. When you're in a bubble, um, and the people we were dealing with were all in a bubble, uh, you may not even realise you're in the bubble. It, it's something that just you exist in. So you have Roger Daltrey, John Entwistle, uh, you have Keith Moon doing crazy stuff, you have Pete Townsend not talking to anybody, you have Ringo Starr, you know, being Ringo Starr. Um, Rick Danko was perhaps imbibing too many noxious substances. Uh, there were all kinds of madnesses going on and we encapsulated that. And I think my book managed to give that flavour. I'm really thrilled that the one of the people that reviewed it and, and said very nice things about it was Keith Ortham. And Keith Ortham was the chief publicity guy for The Who. He'd been around, he's a very good writer himself. And he said, yeah, this is authentic. This is... I'm going to have to stop you. Uh, your chain position where it was catching all the time. I, I didn't. I didn't know that. Well, you okay. wouldn't know <laughs> it. It's only poor delicate souls like myself. No, it's just, it's, it's way, it's that way. Yeah, I'm. I'm thrilled to be able to say that Keith Ortham, who is uh, was the chief. I'm thrilled to be able to say that Keith Ortham, who was the PR guru for the Who and many other bands. Is, has said very kind things about my book uh, because he, more than anybody, was in a position to know what was really happening there and why it would be an accurate reflection of a time and a place that was um, <laughs> very unique um, in terms of the, the... You couldn't recreate a film like that. Uh, it, it, normal people couldn't do it. And I guess we were either abnormal or subnormal <laughs> because we we managed to survive it. Well, it, in fact, I think it did take a terrible toll on some people. Uh, I tried to resign, I think, seven times from the film um, and was reminded of my contractual obligations on each occasion. Um, the executive producer, who was a lovely man called Sidney Rose, really, really got punished, uh, not for any fault of his own. He worked really hard and he did very good, a very good job. And the reason he got punished was because he was in the middle of a war. Um, on the one hand, there was me pushing him to fight uh, on my side against what I thought was like an oppressive regime, which was the management of the band. Um, and on the other hand, was the band or the management of the band because that was also split. Everything was split. There was like camps. So there was the, my camp, which was basically me uh, and a little bit of Sydney. And we were having problems with the director, Jeff Stein, who had his whole reason for doing things his way. Um, right, wrong or indifferent, they were different from our aims and objectives. Um, and then there was the in the Who, two camps. There was the management camp with Roger Daltrey, uh, who kind of took my side. And on the other side of that were the Pete Townsend camp that was backing Jeff Stein uh, because they'd orig originally agreed the deal between them and hadn't told anyone. <laughs> and so there was like two contrary things happening simultaneously. And that 
creates lots of interesting things, outcomes where nobody's getting what they want quite. And you have what they call open warfare. And so I don't really take kindly to being pushed around. So I pushed back and Sydney, sadly, was in the middle of that. And I think he got damaged by it. Um, I don't mean financially or legally, because those consequences of everybody suffers. But I think in terms of emotionally and spiritually, that's tough to take um, when you've got like a war raging across you. And the film that was supposed to have taken two, uh, uh, I think we aimed originally it was going to take six months, ended up taking like two, three years. And it was a constant battle, a constant battle. And luckily for me, I keep good notes. I keep good files. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very methodical like that. Uh, uh, basically because I'm a writer and a storyteller, so that's kind of my reason for being. It's like blood in my blood, you know, in my body. It goes round and round. And so I had very good notes. Now I got offered, believe it or not, a lot of money to give lots of dirt about the band, and that isn't the purpose of this book. It isn't. I, I don't. I don't go down that road. It's not what. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. It's just that that's what you don't do. I tell the story on a professional basis about what happened for the making of this film. And so it's not a means to badmouth anybody. It's a means to tell the story from my perspective and hopefully from objectively from everybody's perspective so that everybody gets to see what it is to make a film with a bunch of loonies. And I'm occluded in a bunch of loonies. It's not an insult to the loonies. Uh, we're all in the loony bin together when you're making a film like this. And it's the same story that you could tell almost, although my loonies were bigger loonies than most, it, that you could tell from working with any rock group or thing like that, because you uh, it's, it's a theme I'm picking up today. It, you're living in a bubble. Um, you're, you're in a strange place you have the expenditure of enormous amounts of money to gain even bigger amounts of money through your creativity that burns through your heart or your brain or both. And as a, as a result of which, if it works, it's fantastic and you can do what you want. If it doesn't work, you're out the door next. And that goes for the filmmakers and the music makers and all the people that do creative stuff. So this book is not just aimed at people who want to do a rock film. It's aimed at anybody who wants to make a documentary or a movie or write a book or deal with people in those industries because you'll get a better understanding once you read this of what it is to do this kind of work. Uh, because everybody else thinks it's easy and my book proves it ain't. It's very, very difficult. And hopefully you'll also have a laugh when you read it. Enjoy the book, The Who and I.